life, friend. If I was to sit down and talk to you for about 10 minutes, I'd find out you're just as much as a wreck as I am. Amen? Can you say amen to that? Every one of you just about as much as a wreck as I am, but I can believe on the Savior today that can help us. We're going to go to the book of uh, Second Chronicles, the book of Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 7 here, and, and uh, there's some good reading here, and I'm sure you've read this. People have said it a lot, especially through the pandemic and, and the things that's went on here lately, and, and they've used this scripture, and, and I don't think that's where God's going to take me today, but uh, I, don't, I know I don't have the authority to give you an assignment like I do in the classroom, but if you'd like some good reading, I'd love for you to read Second Chronicles chapter 6 as uh, Solomon begins to dedicate the temple. It's a wonderful reading. Uh, as he begins to talk about, and people ask, you know, where does the altar come from, and, and where do these things come from that we do? I believe if you'll read Second uh, Chronicles chapter 6, you'll find out where some of this comes from, and, and the things that uh, Solomon began to pray, and what a wonderful prayer. I don't know that uh, there's any greater prayer in the Bible than what Solomon did, a man of wisdom that asked God for wisdom. Uh, but if you have time, maybe today or sometime this week, and you'd like to read something, I don't care if you read it before or not, let's go back and read that again in, in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 6, some wonderful reading. So if you want to stand for the reading of God's Word, uh, you pray for me today that God be able to use me. Uh, I just come to in the demonstration of the Spirit. As I told you, I don't know any of your business, and you don't need to know mine, and I don't want to know yours, but I want to preach to you today exactly what God gave me. So in Second Corinthians uh, chapter 7, starting with verse uh, 14, well, let's start with verse 13, 2 Chronicles uh, 7 and 13. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. This is God speaking back and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made unto this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do accordingly to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying... There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my statues and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be astonishment to everyone that pass by it. So that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land, unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of a land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. You help me pray that God would be able to use me today. Uh, Father in heaven, I come to you, God. I pray that uh, you'd be able to use me this morning. Father, I pray that uh, you'd give me the words to say, God, I'm just a little old me. You know my faults, my failures. God, you know my shortcomings and my down settings, my uprising. I pray, Father, you'd be able to look past that today and be able to help us. I pray, God, you'd be able to give me the words to say, Lord, if there's sin in the house today, I want to preach to the one that's got sin today, God. I want to preach to the one today that thinks they got no sin today, Father. And I especially want to preach to my own heart that I be found faithful to you, Lord, in this hour that we find ourselves. Lord, when it seems like evil spreading itself like a green bay tree. I'm no match for it today, Father, but I pray, Lord, you'll be able to give us that words to say and the demonstration of the Spirit, God, and that sweet Holy Ghost power to come down today. God, I pray we'll be able to know that we've been amongst you today. I pray, Father, you take ignorant and unlearned men and help this world know that they've been amongst the Savior. God, I pray you take this stammering tongue, this weak mind, God, and this broken vessel and use it for thy glory and the upbuilding of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's Word. And I'm going to try to lay a foundation just here a minute and I maybe go back and look at these scriptures just a thought, but I can remember growing up and it seemed like, and this may be a little funny at first, but I don't mean for it to be, and I can remember, I don't even remember who my grandmother was talking about, but, or who my mother was talking about, but they said, oh, that one's a two-timer, oh, that one's a two-timer. I'd like to preach to you today the ways of a two-timer, oh, the ways of a two-timer, friend. I believe God began to tell them here. He said, if five people would turn from 
from their wicked ways. You know what it is today, friends? They're drawn to this way. They're drawn to that way. God doesn't want to, praise God, somebody to be a two-timer. He wants somebody to be committed to Him. You know what's wrong with this world? We find ourselves not wanting to commit to nothing. We don't want to commit to doing something. We don't want to commit to telling somebody we'll be there. And we surely don't want to commit to God and tell Him we'll do something for Him. We're just happy exactly where we're at. We, we, praise God, I tell you, God's not looking for two-timers. He's looking for somebody that's sold out to Him. He's looking for somebody that'll lay your life down for Him and expect you to give everything He gives you. Have you ever been around somebody that was a two-timer? I'm talking about a two-timing friend. Somebody that talked good to your face but talked bad behind your friend. I'm telling you, there's many of those people today and hell's enlarged himself with that type of person. They come to church every week. I'm not throwing rocks at you, but I'd like to know how many today as religious two-timers in this church, maybe in churches across the land, they're just happy with a little bit, but they won't want the whole thing. They don't want to really commit themselves to God. They're happy with the world. He said, if my people, praise God, I don't believe his people should have had evil in their heart, but if I read this fair, friend, I find my fault in these people right here. I find that fault in my heart too, friend. I find myself sometimes being drawn away of this world, and I say, God, would you forgive me? I promise I don't want to commit adultery with this world. We think about it many times in marriage. I'm married to God, and you are too, friend. I'm the bride of Christ. I may not look too pretty, but he said he wanted to marry me, and I could be part of him, and he could be part of me. He don't expect me to look at other gods. He said, I don't want you to look on other gods. He said, I'm a jealous God. He said, commit your ways unto me. Have I really committed my ways unto him, or am I just a two-timer? Am I somebody that really don't want to spend time with God? I want to hold hands of God on Sunday, but I want to be flirting with the world all week. I'm telling you, it's easy to do that if you don't watch out. This world would love to draw you away from what God wants to give you. <laughs> you ever been around that before? Some two-timer? I tell you, I don't know nobody's business here and don't take this wrong. But there's many, praise God, relationships that end because somebody wasn't faithful. You know what one day is going to happen on this side? If we're not faithful to God, this relationship's going to end. I'm going to go to one place and he's going to go to another. But praise God, if I put my hand in his hand, I want him to know I'm fully persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. <laughs> don't you get quiet on me today, friend. You ever know any two-timers? Any two-timers you know? Well, I don't know why that's talking to that one. He surely ain't going to be faithful to her. You know what he's done to everybody else? That's the same way we are. He said, adulterous generation. He said, they seek after a sign. You know why they seek after a sign? They want to know when God's coming back so they can fix everything in their lives. Hey, praise God, you've seen it your own self. And these two people that can't agree with one another, this one's cheating on that one, that one's cheating on that one. They're always wanting to know where that one's at, and that one's already wanting to know where that one's at because they can't trust one another. Can you trust God today? I'd like to ask you a personal, can you trust the Lord Jesus Christ today? Let me ask you something a little bit personal. Can He trust you today? Can He trust you to get out of His sight today? Or does He have to keep His eyes on you all the time? Are you really committed to Him today, friend? Have you really give everything to Him? Are we playing with the world? Are we looking at the world and thinking, man, I'd like to be over there with them. I'd like to be doing what they're doing. Praise God, I'm telling you, that's the way of a two-timer. And they'll find their place in a lake of fire and burning forever. I don't want to be that two-timer. You say, this ain't very popular. I know it ain't very popular. But I want to tell you something. God's tired of cold and indifferent people that ain't got no power. I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about everywhere. I'm talking about my own heart, friend. What do I look at on Monday? Am I trying to seek God's Word? Am I trying to seek Him on Tuesday? Or am I just happy with Sunday? I want to be committed to Him, friend. And I want to be one-on-one. -on -one. So when that day comes together, we'll be joined together. What a bright, what a wedding day that's going to be. Praise God, because I committed myself to Him and trying to do everything He'd want me to do. He said, you're backslidden on me, Israel. He said, Judah, you're backslidden on me. He said, you committed adultery, praise God, on every high hill, among every green tree. He said, you committed adultery against me. How many times you find people in here committing adultery? You know what that is? Praise God, that's unfaithfulness in marriage. If God's married you to Himself, we ought to find ourselves faithful to Him and not looking upon this world. You know, when you're not satisfied, you're going to start looking. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. Praise God, if thy mouth offend thee, pluck it out. If you find yourself looking, I'm telling you, don't look for another. We have found Him. We found the ones the prophet told us about. We found the ones that's coming to die for our sins. Why should we look for another? How many is looking for another today? There's a lot looking for another today. They're not satisfied with the old way. They're not satisfied with Christ no more. They're tired of it. 
It's just old to them, ain't it? We just go through the motion. Just old to them. They said, we don't want that old way. Give us a new way. I'm telling you, the old way will lead that path, friend. It'll lead you all the way to heaven. I don't want no new way to you. And maybe this is part two to last week. I don't know why I didn't mean for that to happen. Praise God, I didn't mean to be able to preach heaven or hell again. But that's what God wants us to preach. That's what we're going to do. The truth timer is going to find his place in a lake of fire. Praise God, there's no truth in him. So what is truth, Pilate said? What is truth? He was looking at it and said, what is it? Have you ever thought, what is truth? Can I trust anybody? Can God really trust you, friend? Can God really trust me with His Word? Can He trust me to do His will? Can He trust me to do exactly what He tells me to do? Or will I try to twist it a little bit? Now, God, I've got something else going on. You've seen that before. I've seen the one man holding, woman, holding this woman's hand and looking at another one. I've seen women holding that man's hand and looking at another one. I worked in a factory for 20 years. I've been around a whole lot of adultery, friend. I know exactly how it works. I know exactly how it works. It starts out real small. You start looking. Next thing you know, you start talking. Next thing you know, you start spending time with them. You know what happens on the end of that, friend? There's something going to break, God. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, you better put your mind back on the Lord and stop looking at this world. Praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord, preacher. I'm telling you right today, friend. I'm preaching to myself the same way as I am you. I've seen it time and time again. Many people coming together. I want to just start talking. The same way spiritually speaking. Start looking at other gods. Start talking about other gods. Start looking, praise God, wanting to, 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 to desire to have that other God. You know what will happen? He'll give you desires of your heart. If you want to be out in this world, He'll say, turn from me. I'm tired of fooling with you. I wash my hands of you. I'm done. I'd hate to hear that, wouldn't you? I'm done with you. I'm done with you. How many times have we seen that? Praise God. We've been on the inside of that, on the outside of that. We've seen it everywhere. And he said, I'm done. I'd hate to say God said he's done with me. He said, you're a two-timer. I can't trust you. I can't send you to the grocery store. I can't, praise the Lord. I can't send you to work. I can't send you nowhere. You've got your mind on something else. He said, you played the harlot with me, and I'm done with you. I'm done with you, Donnie. Has he ever said that to you? You say, I ain't never been like that. Bless your lying heart. I hope you come pray today. We all got it in us. Every one of us drawn away. Every one of us is drawn away, ain't we? You can say amen if you want to. We're all drawn away of this world. But the power's right here. I'd hate to think I'm a two-timer. I can still hear my old granny saying that. She's just a two-timer. She was mad at somebody. He's just a two-timer. He won't be honest to her. Praise God, look what he's done to all them other ones. He'll do the same thing to her. I want to be different, don't you? I don't want to do what the church world's doing. I want to do what Christians are doing, falling on their knees and asking God to help us. The old two-timer. The old two-timer. You ever had a two-timing friend? They come talk to you, and before you know it, they went and tell somebody else something they weren't supposed to tell some secret that you was asking them to help you with. And they went and told somebody, hey, that's a two-timing friend. Hey, God, I'll mark that person. Stay away from them. I'll do my best to stay away from them, friend. I don't want to get near to that. I don't want any of that to rub off on me. i got enough of my own problems. I don't need nobody else's. Praise the Lord. You ever been around a two-timer? This is the way of the two-timer. I praise God I read about Solomon. Or, or uh, Samson, they rather. Samson had all power. Praise God, from the time of a child, born and raised as a Nazarite, not to cut his hair, not to do any of these things, not to touch anything dead, all of these things. But guess what? He started to look. He started to look in places he didn't need to be looking. He was getting ready to be unequally yoked with something he didn't need to be unequally yoked with, friend. Laying in the lap of Delilah. Laying in the lap of Delilah. Thinking everything's going to be all right. How many today, praise God, how many today are laying in the lap of Delilah and she's just trying to get your power? She's trying to steal everything from you that God's given you. God anointed that man from the beginning to have power, friend. Ain't nobody else could kill like he killed. Ain't nobody else could do like he done. Praise God. God give him power. You know what happens when God gives you power? The world wants to take it from you. The world would love to rob you of what God gives you. And that's what he did to Samson. He had his mind on something else. He wasn't thinking about God's work when he had his head in Delilah's lap. Praise the Lord. You know what the best thing you can do is keep your mind on Jesus. I woke up this morning with a mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with a mind stayed on Jesus. Not on this world. This world can't give me no help for him. You say you're not drawn by this world. You better believe that your pastor's drawn by this world. I live in the same world you live in. But you know what I find at the end of that road? I find destruction. I find pain and no power. I like to feel a bit of power, don't you? Not in my own self. I'm telling you, I'm nothing but a worm today. I'm the least among you. Don't even deserve to be up here. But God sent me to tell you, don't be a two-timer. He don't like that. He don't like spiritual two-timers. He said you're not cold and you're not hot. 
He said, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I hope people hear this. Thousands of people, praise God, hear this. We put it on the radio. God allows us to do that. It's on the internet. People all over the world. You can talk to my wife. All over the world get to listen to what we tell about the Savior. I'm telling you today, if you don't have your mind made up, this world will draw you back, friend. And it'll be too late one day. Praise the Lord. I want my mind made up, don't you? I want my mind made up that I'm going to take whatever it takes. Praise God, no matter how often I stop to pray, I'm going to make heaven my home because he died for me. And I don't want to be a two-timer. He said, you got to, praise God. He said, your head's like a harlot. It's hard. You won't listen to me. You won't listen to me. He said, I've tried to come to you. Look at Samson at the end of that. Thank God there's healing at the house of God today. I'm not beating down on you, I promise. But if you found yourself being a two-timer on God, there's healing today. There's healing in His wings today. He'll forgive you of that sin. You say, how you know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I've been forgiven of a lot of things, friend. Everything I ever committed. And I've came to Him with a contrite heart and a broken spirit. He's forgiven me of that. You say, I'm guilty, but I don't know what to do about it. We're all guilty. If there's somebody here who says you ain't guilty, I hope we can pray with you all day long. I won't even eat lunch today. I'll sit here and pray with you all day. You can come to the knowledge of repentance. Every one of you is guilty. I'm guilty just like you. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, friend. You're guilty, praise God, of breaking that law. He said, thou shalt not, praise the Lord, thou shalt not commit adultery. He's not just talking about fleshly adultery like this world talks about it. He's talking about spiritual adultery. He said, I am a jealous God. He said, I am the Lord thy God besides me. There's none other. I'm the only God, and I'm jealous. You're trying to two-time me. He said, I've seen it. I've seen it. You just want me to give you a sign for me to come back? As I told you before, the adulterous generation, they're just wanting to know. I can remember as a young boy, when I knew when Mom and Daddy went to the grocery store, that was my hour and a half to get into mischief. I'm not bragging on it. I'm just telling you. That was my hour and a half to get into mischief. I knew what things was at and where things was at I could partake in. And, and they didn't have no idea when they came back. But you know what I was listening for? I was listening for that gravel to start popping. When that gravel started popping, son, you better believe I was getting everything straight in that house. Everything's just like it was mom and daddy left. And I was just sitting there like nothing happened. Been sitting here about an hour and a half waiting for y'all to get back. You know what? That's what we think we can do, fleshly speaking. But if, with God, that don't work. You may be messing around waiting on that gravel to start popping on that driveway. Praise God like a thief in the night. He's coming back when you least expect it. And if you've got sin in your life, you ain't going with everybody else. If I've got sin in my life, I'm not going with everybody else. You know what I was doing? I was doing my mom and daddy wrong. I was two-time in my relationship with him. I was doing things they didn't know I was doing. I surely wasn't supposed to be doing those things. And I wasn't going to go tell them I was doing I thought they'll never find out. They'll never find out. To this day, I don't, my mom passed away. I don't reckon she ever knew it. Daddy probably still don't know it. But you know what? God knew it. My, whoa, praise the Lord. My Lord keeps a record of the moments I'm living down here. He knows exactly what you're doing, friend. He knows exactly what I'm doing. I may be able to hide it from my brother. I may be able to hide it from my sister. But I'll never hide my ways from God. He said, you're two-timing me. And I'm about done with you. I'm about ready to throw in a towel. I'm about done with you. I'm tired of you. Just playing in and out and in and out. I'm not throwing this to nobody. I'm preaching to myself today, friend. So many times the world tries to allure us away. Tries to allure us away. I think in the book of Hosea, God told him to marry a harlot. And he told Hosea, he said, I'm going to allure her to the wilderness and speak softly to her. He said, I'm going to allure her to the wilderness. You know what? Praise God. The grace of God brings salvation. It's appeared to all men. And the goodness of God leadeth man to repentance. These things that God's trying to get you to be able to understand. He wants you to come a little bit closer to Him instead of turning away from Him. I want to keep my eyes on Him, don't you? I don't want to keep my eyes on this world. I got my eyes on the prize, friend, and not in this world. There ain't no prize in this world. I can die with all the money, but what would it profit a man? If he gained his whole soul, bring all the money, and lost his everlasting soul, what would it profit that man? What would it profit a man? <laughs> what would it profit him? If he was able to two time on his family, on his children, on his God. What would it profit that man? When he leaves here, friend, he's going to leave it all. And somebody else is going to be spending it. I'm not talking about fleshly speaking today. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. God said, I'm tired of the two timer. He said, that church house is full of them all over the world. He said, they come in on Sunday, but they live the way they want to all week. Praise God, I'm telling you, unless you're committed to him, we ain't going to make it, Brother Mike. I've got to commit myself to him every day. You say you're nosing my business? No. I don't know nothing about none of you. Unless something you told me. I don't know nothing about nobody here. But I know what God told me that. And I thought, Lord, can I preach something else? 
Can I preach how beautiful heaven's going to be? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a good message to preach? Just how beautiful. And it will be beautiful for those that ain't a two-timer. You say, well, I've been caught in a trap. Praise God, I've been caught in that trap too. But let me tell you something about one that can open that trap and let the fowler, praise God, he can tear the snare up. He can open up and let that bird fly away. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> I hope you've not been a two-timer on the Lord this week. I don't know what that's about. I will tell you... I was uh, praying about it. It seemed like the Lord gave me that. I thought, I'm not even going to write that down because I surely don't want to preach that. And I had a brother call me from another place and he said, uh, I'd like for you to pray for me. He said, my wife told me she wants a divorce. And I, I said, uh, okay, I'll pray for you. I don't know. I don't know anything about the situation. I don't want to know, but God began to bring this back to me. I'd hate for God to ask for a divorce from me. I'd hate for God to ask for a divorce from me, wouldn't you? That's a painful time in a man and woman's life. But I'd hate for my God to say, I want to build a divorce from you. <laughs> we got unreconcilable differences. Praise God, I've seen that many times on the paper. We got unreconcilable differences. You won't do it my way, so go your own way. I'm done with you. I'd hate to hear that, wouldn't you? I'd hate for God to give me a bill of divorcement. But I'm telling you, I believe it's close. I believe there's many people that's going to see that. They're tired. They're, they ain't doing it. They're just coming in, just doing whatever they want to. He said, I'm tired of that. we got irreconcilable differences. We just can't see eye to eye. You ever heard people say that? Well, we just can't see eye to eye. I'm telling you something. If you can't see eye to eye with God, you better just beg Him to help you and forgive you of all your sins. And anything you've done wrong, I'd hate to be that one. that He says, I'm ready. I'm ready for a divorce. I'm tired of you. I can't trust you to go to the store. Oh, Lord. I'm talking spiritually speaking. I can't trust you to go to the store. Your wandering eyes are looking at everything. I can't trust you to go to work. You're telling them jokes you shouldn't be telling. I can't trust you no more. I'd hate to hear God tell me that. Wouldn't you hate to hear God tell you that? I'm done with you. I can't trust you no more. I'm done with you. I can't trust you. You can't get out of my sight. I've got to keep my eyes on you all the time and remind you that I'm your God and I'm your Savior. He said, these that I've led out of Egypt... These that I've led out of Egypt. <laughs> he said, if it stops raining, you know why it's going to stop raining? Because they've turned away from him. He said, if you know why the, the pestilence is going to come? He said, because you turned away from me. He said, praise God. But if my people, if my people, which are called by my name, will turn for those wicked ways. He said, I'll hear. I'll hear you. I'll hear you once again. Don't you want him to hear you today? Say, God, can you help me get out of this mess? Have you ever had to say that? God, can you help me get out of this mess? I sure have done it this time. I have no idea how I'm going to get out of this. He said, come closer. Come closer to me. Let's spend some time together. Let's renew our vows. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. Let's renew our vows to the Lord today and ask him to help us. Wouldn't you like to do that? I'd like to be standing there. And they say, will you take him? I say, I do. I do. My uncle, he used to say, well, certainly. He's passed away now, but he said that all the time. I can remember at his wedding, we went there, and I was maybe, I don't, I don't know what I did, something. And the, the preacher said, will you take this woman? He said, well, certainly. I was certainly. I tell you, certainly I'd take my Savior. I love to renew my vows to Him and marry Him all over. You say, you're crazy. Well, praise God, call me crazy all the way to heaven. I want to make it, don't you? Praise the Lord. I've done, it. I've done, done, done received sin in this world. I done did everything they asked me to do, and it didn't give me no happiness. And they can't offer nothing to me now. Praise the Lord. They can't offer nothing to me now that I'm going to think for one second it's going to make me happy. I did everything they asked me to do. For 26 years, I give the world a chance. And they did everything. They throwed everything at me, and I put everything in this body. I put everything in this mind, and I'm paying for it today, friend. But I put all those things in here, but it didn't bring no happiness to me. Hey, if it brought happiness to me, I wouldn't ask God to save my soul. But I came to the end of myself. And I said, Lord, I want to commit myself to you. I don't want to be a two-timer. I don't want to be having two or three gods that I'm, I'm, I'm worshiping. I don't want to have idols around in my house. I don't want to have idols in my car. I don't want to be listening to idols that don't sing the praises and glory to God. I don't want none of that, God. I just want you. You're the only one I want. He said, well, it'd be a good time for us to get married. You better believe that. It's a good time for you to marry yourself to him if you're really ready to commit yourself and to push all these things aside. You know, when a man decides he's going to marry a woman or a woman decides she's going to marry a man, if they've got phone numbers, I don't know why I'm going here, bless your heart. If they've got phone numbers somebody else, you know what's going to happen? You better get rid of them. 
You better get rid of them phone numbers. You know what's going to happen? You've got them love letters laying in your closet. Some, your wife's going to find them and say, what's this? Well, that's from 10 years ago. She said, I'm going to burn them today. They're going to be burnt today. If you've got love letters from this world from previous times, today's a good day to get rid of them. You say, what are you talking about? You pray and ask God. <laughs> He'll show you if you've got something in your life that don't belong there. He'll show you if you still got something. Some of that old songs you used to listen to, bless his heart. Some of that old music you used to listen to. Some of that old stuff you used to do that continued to be a sin in your life. You say, you tell me what sin is? No. God will tell you what sin is if you ask Him. But if you still got some of them old phone numbers, some of them old love letters, some of them things when you used to be in the world, I, I, there's been times in my life since I've been saved and I didn't remember that I had it, but I'd be going through my stuff and I'd go, man, I remember that CD and I start thinking, I don't need to be having this in my house. This is a bunch of nonsense. I better get rid of it. And then you're thinking, I paid $20 for that. I'm going to throw that in the trash. I don't know, that's awful hard. But eventually, you've got to get to the point where you've got to throw that mess in the trash. You say, now what is it? Well, you just ask God what you need to throw in the trash. I'll ask Him what I need to throw in the trash. I ain't got the authority to come to your house and tell you what to do. That's between you and your Savior. That ain't between you and your pastor, friend, unless you ask me my opinion. But I'm telling you, if there's something that, be- that be- don't belong to you that needs to go somewhere else, the best thing you can do is pick it up and throw it in the trash. This longing after other gods, this longing after other things, He don't want that no more. He's tired of it. He's tired of two-timers. He's tired of two-timers. We knew it was going to end that way. I've heard some say, we knew that marriage was going to end that way. He's been like that all his life. He can't be faithful. She's been like that all her life. She can't be faithful. A tiger can't change his stripes, oh Lord. But I'm telling you one thing, Jesus can save your stripes. Jesus can save your, change your stripes, friend. You may be born a harlot. You may be born a hungmonger, whoremonger. But God can change your heart and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. You say, how do you know that? I promise you I know that. We don't have to talk about it. God can change you. Praise the Lord. God can change you today. You ain't got to be a two-timer. I've heard some say she'll never change. He'll never change. Guess what? God can change you. God can change you, friend. I don't care how, how evil you've been. I don't care how deep in sin you've been. How long you've been a two-timer on God. Today can be the day He puts a clean heart inside of you. He puts a clean heart. Sister Angel, will you come to the music, please? He'll put a clean heart inside of you. Oh, Lord. The old two-timer. The ways of a two-timer. I read to you here. I believe it's in Proverbs if I can find it. Proverbs chapter 30. This is where we're at today, friend. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 20. I'm going to change this a little way. Just forgive me. It says, Such is the way of an adulterous woman and man. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. That's the world we're in today, friend. They committed. Praise God. I'm throwing myself in there. The adulterous man, spiritually speaking, adulterous woman, spiritually speaking, committeth adultery, wipeth her mouth and say, I've done no wrong. I've done no wickedness. How many people today, they're in the church house and they're examining themselves, praise God, right now. Maybe a man of God preaching all over the world and they're sitting there saying, I've done nothing wrong. I ain't done nothing wrong. I, I'm just as good as everybody else, friend. You ain't got to be just as good as everybody else. you got to be as good as the Savior wants you to be and call upon Him and acknowledge you've done wrong. But the good news is, as she begins to play, the good news is, there's healing at the house tonight, friend, this morning. There's healing here for you. If you find yourself being a two-timer on the Lord, I'm not talking about anything else. I don't need to know your business. But God's giving you an opportunity right now. <laughs> God's giving you an opportunity right now to commit yourself to Him. To ask His hand in marriage. <laughs> ask His hand in marriage. Praise God, when I was going to marry my wife, I went and talked to her daddy. And you know what? I believe the God in heaven saying it's okay. If you want to, you can marry my son. If you want to, you can marry my son. If you'll be truthful to him. If you won't mistreat him. Praise God, the same thing I tell anybody. Want to marry my younger. You better be nice to him. Praise God, you better not mistreat him. Praise the Lord. If you come to him, God's already said it's okay. God, you already got God's, God, God's uh, gives you his, his okay. You can marry his son. Don't that feel good? To know you can be married to the Savior of the world. You can become one in one. You can come together. Say you've been married to Him for a while. Maybe you've already been married to Him. How about renewing your vows to Him today? You say that's silly, is it? You won't think it's silly when you stand there hoping you get inside that gate, friend. You may think it's silly now, but I want you to know there ain't nothing silly about my Savior. He's truthful today. What is truth? Would you like to know what truth is today? Everybody stand. Would you like to know what truth is? (laughs) Truth is... A sinner can be forgiven today. Praise the Lord. (laughs) That two-timer can be forgiven today. You can commit your ways unto the Lord. Commit your ways unto Him. Would you like to commit your ways? Every head bowed, every eye closed. 
I don't know where this message found you. I really don't. And, and, I, and I don't want to know your business. As I said before, I don't know anything about anybody here. I promise you I don't. I didn't come here with an axe to grind. I come here with what, what saith the Word of God and what He put upon my heart. I said, Lord, can I preach something else? He said, no. He didn't say I was coming to beat down on this church because you know my heart. I would never do that. But I'm coming to remind you there's a lot of two-timers, spiritually speaking, in this world. And there's going to come a day when God says, I'm done with you. I want a divorce. I fought as hard as I can fight. I give everything I can. And you just keep going out. I can't trust you. I want you to know you can trust Him today. Would you commit yourself to Him once again? Would anybody like to come to this altar? Would anybody like to come to this altar? If you read in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, praise God, I'm glad it said like this. I put it in my words, but Solomon said, if a stranger coming to this house, praise God, he said, if a stranger coming to this house and he offer it upon the altar, it shall be forgiven him. If a stranger, friend, if somebody who comes all the time is here today and you'd like to offer that upon this altar, when he prayed that prayer, <laughs> would you like for God to cleanse you today? Would you like to commit yourself close? Yeah, I'd like a closer walk with him. Don't you like that song, Just a Closer Walk? Just a closer walk with my Savior. Just to get a little bit closer to Him. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you like to get closer to Him? I'd like to give Him a hug today, wouldn't you? Praise God, that's one thing COVID's hurt us. Nobody can't give hugs no more like we used to. But I'm telling you, one day, I'll be able to give Him a hug. I'll be able to feel Him. I'll be able to smell His breath, friend. I'll be able to feel His heartbeat. And no, praise God, He's helped me make it. I can't make it on my own, friend. You may find yourself as a spiritual two-timer. And I don't want you to embarrass yourself by coming up here to this altar. I don't want to do that. Nobody needs to know your business. But I'm going to do a little bit different today. Praise God, I'm going to do a little bit different. If you felt that on your heart, and you realize that you've cheated, you've cheated on God this week, you cheated on God last week, something's just been continually going, been growing, been growing. Maybe you're just in the first stages of it. Maybe you actually hadn't committed adultery with that other God yet, but you surely are looking at it. You surely are letting your eyes be drawn to it. I'd, let's do this a little bit different. You keep your head bowed, every eye closed. I pray that right now, if you realize that you've been a two-timer on God, would you ask Him to help you? I don't want you to come in front of nobody and embarrass yourself about this. But if you found yourself guilty of this, I'll tell you something. Somebody's been guilty of it or God wouldn't put it on my heart. Maybe not at this church, but somebody's going to hear this message. They've been guilty of it. Maybe I've been guilty of it, friend. I've had to examine my own self. Maybe you've been guilty. If you've been guilty of two-timing on God, of not spending any time with Him, of not picking His Word up from Sunday to Sunday, of not having a time where you open this book and ask God to help you. You say, I can't read very good. Guess what? Your pastor can't either. But I can open this book and he can read. He can, he can show me where he's at, friend. If there's any of you that feel like you've two-timed on the Lord this week, just ask Him to help you. We're going to move on here in a second. But just ask Him to help you. I don't want you to embarrass yourself. Nobody needs to know nobody's business. But ask Him to help you to commit yourself to Him. That you'll be fully committed. You'll be fully committed not to look upon another. Oh, praise God. The Bible says if you even look upon another, you've already committed adultery in your heart. I know he may have been talking about fleshly speaking, but he's talking about spiritually speaking too. If you've already looked upon another God, if you've looked upon somebody else, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Commit means that you have given to and trust. You have trusted your soul with it. Are you trusting your soul with the devil's hell today? If you commit yourself to adultery, you're committing your soul to that. You're committing your life to that, friend. And here will be your home and my home as well if I find myself guilty of that. Anybody? Praise God. Okay. Hopefully you ask God to help you with that. Anybody like to raise their hand and say, Preacher, I wish you'd remember my family. I've been trying my best, friend. I've been trying my best to ask God to help me with this. To remind me who raises their hand. I pray for you every day anyway. But I try, praise God. Praise God, I try to give you, amen, amen. I try to give you extra time in the day.